Want me to help you do that faster? Because to me, this is how slow it looks like you're sweeping. I'm true sweeping. I remember when you were very tiny and couldn't talk. That was a nice time. Really, ever since I was growing up, I always told my mom that my dream role was to be a superhero, because that's just amazing. Um, and then also the fact that I get to play, you know, a Latinx superhero who gets to be, you know, a role model for a bunch of other kids. I read the breakdown and the character, and I was like, this is amazing. You know, it's like a uh, Latin, Batman-esque, luchador, superhero kind of energy. And, and I was like, oh, this is awesome, you know? Um, I'm never gonna get it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. They have someone else in mind, for sure. Um, but I just had fun, you know? I just had fun with it, and, and I, I was, I mean, I remember being so excited just because they were making the show to represent, you know, una familia Latina, una familia, you know, a Mexican-American family, a Latinx family, to be able to, to, the fact that Disney was doing that, and now they are doing it, um, that to me was so important. Well, we saw an announcement and it was so fun and we were just immediately kind of like taken by, well, that looks like a fun show to do. And I think I've always been like a huge fan of Mexican culture and generally I was like, I, I went to my first Maya site when I was like 15 years old and I just kind of dove into it, you know, from that point on. A lot of studying, I love Octavio Paz that I discovered in college. Um, so, I don't know, just to be able to do something that has kind of a rich history was, was a dream come true, really. Yeah, I, one of the things that made me want to do the show was I grew up watching a lot of wrestling. Me and my brother were huge wrestling fans, and we're also huge superhero fans. And it seemed like an amazing opportunity to blend the world of wrestling and superheroes together and sort of create a new language and a new show that was sort of unique out in the marketplace. Now you're broke. And if you like that, come to my meetup tomorrow at 2 p.m. by Taza Caliente Coffee. Um, I think this crime might still be in progress. I got this. gonna say but what was I supposed to do spend the next hundred years in training you were outnumbered and reckless I just wanted to fight crime I'm a superhero too you don't know the first thing about being a superhero you could have been hurt or worse but the mask chose me and I have no idea why it did when Eric and I start a show we have three rules and the rules are we all check our egos at the door we all treat each other with respect and we all have fun. And we literally say this to every single person that we hire. Like we say it to all the actors, we say it to every crew member, we say it to the composer, the editors, like every single person that we bring on the show. And I think it really becomes an ethos for the show and it helps build community. For this project, I was brought on um, very early, once actually once they started shooting, so I could be, and I have enough time to kind of find what that sound was gonna be for this series because you know, it's part superhero, it's part family vibe, it's luchador to the core, and uh, we wanted to make sure we had enough time to figure out what the right sound was for this series. Is that my mentor or my hero? <gasps> oh, wait, it's both. You look good today. That sandwich really brings out your eyes. Nice try. Get in the ring, we got more training to do. But we've been training for like two weeks. Ever since I got the mask, all I've been doing is training. Wow, two whole weeks. How can I ask more of you when you've given so much already? My followers want to see me fight crime. Training isn't going to get me likes. I can't believe I have to say this out loud. The point of being a superhero isn't to get likes. It's to help people. Of course, it's to help people. But to what end? I mean, is it so bad if there's a little something in it for me, too? Right now, what's in it for you is donkey kicks off the ropes. Go. Fine, but I lied about the sandwich bringing out your eyes. 
that really taught me a lot to just kind of be in the moment, let it go, be prepared. From from Scarlett, you know, she was 13. I believe she was 13 at the time, and I'm just like, wow, like she reminded me of when I was a child actor, you know, and 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 brought back that joy, that joy of just let's do it, you know, like who cares, you know what I'm saying? And then when you, when you become an adult, all these other all these other things can get in your head, and you start judging yourself and what do they think and what are they, it doesn't matter. I think this show is just super empowering for, you know, lots of different, an entire different dynamic of people. There's not a lot of, I mean, growing up, there's not a lot of shows that I could watch where I could say that I see, saw myself on TV. So I think it's really important, you know, that I get to play a character that hopefully kids can look up to and say that they see themselves. Hello everyone, we are back on this action-packed Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion special and we're joined by some of the key cast and crew. We have the two stars, Scarlett Estevez and J.R. Villarreal, the two EPs and showrunners, Eric Garcia and Leo Chu, and of course the show's composer, Tony Morales. Yes, Thank you all so much for being here. I can't wait to hear more about what went on behind the scenes of this groundbreaking show. So let's get into it. Okay, guys, we have to start with you because this was your vision. So, how did this come about? Well, for, this came about for us in a very kind of serendipitous way. We saw an announcement about the show, and we're like, oh my God, that would be a super fun show to work on. And, yeah, and then like literally the next day, we got a phone call from Disney, and they're like, do you want to work on the show? And we're like, <laughs> we're like oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. I mean, I love superheroes. Like, I, it's like one of the things I grew up on. I'm like a huge fanboy about superhero stuff. And, and we love Mexican culture, so it, was, it just seemed like a, a dream come true. We talk so much about representation these days. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the Latino demographic is one of the largest in the country. And for some reason, our shows tend to be canceled often. Mm. So how does it feel to be on this set for such a powerhouse that is Disney with a Latino message? You know, what we really knew was an important show from the very beginning. And it was like, you know, we took it really upon ourselves to hire an entire, you know, uh, Latinx writer's room, dominantly uh, Latinx writer's room, Latinx cast, um, and also just to bring all the authenticity that we can to the show. Okay, now Scarlett, our, our superstar here, <laughs> I have to say you are living one of my dreams. You get to play a superhero. You get to play a Latina superhero. What, what is that like for you? I mean, it's incredible. I mean, growing up, I just like, me and my mom always talked about like, what is your dream role? Like if you had to pick one thing you would always want to do, what would you want to do? And I was like, I can never imagine getting to play a superhero. Like that's insane. Um, and you know, obviously growing up, when I watched myself, like I, when I watched TV, I couldn't really see myself ever. Like there wasn't shows I could watch growing up and I could be like, oh my God, like that looks like me, you know? So getting to not only play this dream role and also get to, you know, be somebody that kids can look up to, that put together just made it that much more special. On that note, it is something that a lot of the youth is going to see you and be like, oh my gosh, I can do this. I'm finally seeing me in a superhero suit. What's something that you hope um, they will take away from watching you? I just hope that I can be somebody that kids can look up to. I mean, really, that's all I can say. There's so much in the show for everybody. I mean, you know, we have the superheroes. We have, you know, obviously the Latinx culture. But we also, there's so much love put into this show. And I just hope that people, when they watch it, they can see that. Because it's so strong and we worked really hard to get to now, see Now, don't that lie. Too. Was it fun to have JR as your uncle? I mean, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, JR, <laughs> he was the perfect person to play this character. I mean, I really couldn't imagine anybody else that would have played this character better than JR. I mean, I love the family dynamics between the two of you, and I said this to you in the, in the green room. Yeah. You are so fast <laughs> with your little quips. <laughs> So fast. Yes. Do you ever have moments where you almost break out of character because you're like, did she just say that to oh, me? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. Where sometimes, you know, <laughs> they're shooting her coverage or my coverage, and I'd be like, you know, making a face, and then she'd do it too after. She's like, what? <laughs> anyway, you know, like, all the time. It was so fun. Um, since we're on you, JR, okay. Now, you play this sort of 
anti-hero, some would say grumpy uncle. Who curmudgeon. Is, <laughs> curmudgeon, who is doing amazing things for the community, but has also kind of lost the joy involved in doing those things. Um, so what is it like kind of playing that duality in that character? Wow. Um, well, I'm British. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Joe's playing Joe. I'll make it. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was very fun. I remember when we spoke about it with, with Leo and Eric and, and the writers. And we were uh, talking about it and, you know, who he was. Because I, I, I felt they met me and they are like, oh, this guy's way too nice. Like, he's, <laughs> he's laughing all the time. He has a little giggle. And, uh, and, you know, just finding the tone of that space, like what you're saying, where he's in this where he's coming from when we start um, the show is like he's very like, you know, this isn't how you do it, you know? And, and, and it's, it, it, it's this or that as far as like you either sacrifice you, the, your friends and your family, the ones you love, or you protect them and you focus on this aspect of your life and just protect them. They'll never know, but this is why you're absent, you know? And I mean, it's a superhero show, but I feel like people can relate to that because we sacrifice a lot for people we love and, you know, whether it's work or travel or whatever it is. But he ends up being kind of forced to face this because of Violet, you know, and then he realizes like, oh, you know, I'm trying to teach her stuff, but she's really she's teaching me stuff. I think it also has kind of to do with, you know, and in, in a lot of cultures, but especially the Latinx culture, you know, men feel a pressure to take mm. on a certain role when it comes to yeah. the kids in our life and how, how to guide them, how yeah. to raise Protect them. Protect them. And I think that's a big part of it for sure. You know, he has this idea of what he needs to do. Like we have in, in, in our culture or in, in the world, you know, it's like you want to provide, you want to protect. But sometimes it's okay to kind of learn and, and be like, well, maybe I could do it this way or do it this way, or maybe it doesn't have to be all serious and don't do that, Violet, you know? <laughs> and like, it, could, it, could, it could turn it, you can have fun, you know? You can, have fun. You, know? you can enjoy it and, and getting to riff with Scar and like, you know, the writing is so freaking funny and so funny. great. And I mean, we would just, I would just crack up from <laughs> reading it. And it was so fun to be the grumpy guy. Yeah. Best role ever. It was, I, <laughs> it was I, ha I have to say you're doing a great job because when you walked in in the back, I was like, is that the same person? <laughs> Thank you. It's a a completely guy. different people. <laughs> He's very grumpy. Yes. You are so positive and bright on this show. Oh, yeah. You have so much <laughs> energy. Do you have some of that in your like from your personal being? I mean, yeah, I think that's definitely in a way that I can connect to Violet. I think I see myself as a very positive person. Hopefully, everybody agrees with me that. <laughs> um, but so yeah, I think that that's something that I definitely you know can connect myself with in Violet in that sense. I definitely, when I watch him, like I feel like I want to be her friend and hang out <laughs> with her. He's just gonna uplift me, but at the same time, do I have the energy? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely Violet. Yeah. I'd love to hear some hilarious behind the scenes moments. Mm. So many. <laughs> Ones that Disney would approve you sharing. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, let's move on. I'm just kidding, I'm joking, I'm joking. No, I think the best one at the end for me was uh, seeing JR in that wig. Oh, oh that's right. JR in the ultraviolet wig. It was yeah. like the last episode we were on uh, in that warehouse, like it shooting. Freezing. It was freezing cold. It was so late. It was like three in the morning, and it's just like JR comes out. The With the purple wing. <laughs> yes. I told them the hair team, I was like, well, because I wanted for Scarlett, when she, when she rapped, I wanted to, I had to get it approved, I wanted to dye my hair violet. Like, for the end of it, I wanted to just do a whole thing and, like, surprise you. And it was like, you know, but then they were like, no, 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 because... <laughs> Jack, we're shooting until five. Yeah, yeah, we're like, what are you doing? Like, no, we need your hair. You don't know, we don't know. We'll reshoot. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, what can we do? And then I saw you, well, Scarlett had like 17 wigs. Yeah, there's Every, yeah, was like, there was so many for different shots and setups and looks and stuff. So I asked um, Allie. Yeah, and, the uh, hair lady. And hair department, and she was like, <laughs> what? And I was like, you think I just want to show up? I want to surprise everybody? She was like, well, let's try, yeah. you know? <laughs> and sure enough, I was like, oh, my, my, yes. my head was like this. I was like, yes, I, I, so I walk up and I just see Jared, he's like, Scarlett. And I'm like, what? And he goes, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my, what am I looking at right now? <laughs> it was so funny. We can't forget about Tony. You have a very important part, which is scoring this new show. 
It's been amazing, and um, it's been a dream. And as Eric had mentioned earlier, it, it was even it was it was a bonus that I got to work with people I've actually worked with before. Um, it all came about. I actually remember seeing the announcement about the show, and definitely piqued my interest for uh, obviously two reasons: uh, the superhero genre. I you know love doing that, but the main one was the Mexican American family side of the story. And being Mexican American, it was definitely a project I wanted to seek out and be a part of, and hopefully, you know, get an interview on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so <laughs> here we are today, and things, uh, you know, it's just been it's been a blast to work on and um, be a part of this team. If you had to fit the music of the show into a genre, mm. what would it be? Mm. That is a good question because we do we do we we cover the gamut. I mean, we we infuse we definitely infuse Latin music into the score. But if I had to say. We're going to have a new genre. We're going to call it superhero reggaeton. Oh, oh wow. Oh, I like that. That's, That's probably awesome. as close it. as I can get to that is putting cool. it in. Okay, okay in watch out, Bad Bunny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like my new playlist. Yeah. We, we're going to do a little test okay. so all of you can participate. Okay. okay. I want to I'm know. I'm nervous. We're going to test your knowledge on luchadores. Yes. Oof. Where does oh, this Lord. tradition come from, and how were you able to translate the concept into or for an American audience? I'll take the first half of that. Okay. And then you guys can take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it comes from Greek Roman times, and it came to Mexico like 1863, and the first luchador was Ernesto Urcheteflea, or ah, I'm getting it wrong, and I, Enrique, no, please Enrique. don't, Enrique. 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 Um, un 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 Enrique. He was the first luchador, yeah. and then uh, and it started like really picking up in the 1900s, and and then by the 50s and 60s they had already had the mass tradition and television, and it just became this kind of global phenomenon. That's that start. You guys take it from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I would just say it's like uh, you know the. Insp the inspiration of the masks, I think that it was in the 30s that that really yeah. started to kind of like take on a life mm -hmm. of its own. And I think it was an interesting period in uh, Mexican history because it was during or after that revolution that they had. So you're rediscovering a lot of the roots of Mexican culture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, one of the huge inspirations for me, you know, for, er for all my writing is mythologies. Mm -hmm. And I love, you know, the, the Mayan uh, calendar and the Mayan mythologies, the Aztecs, Olmecs, Toltecs. You know what I mean? So many, they're so inspiring. And the masks were always a part of their religious ceremony. And that those masks gave those people the power and it's like the God was actually present. Mm -hmm. And so like translating that into a superhero thing, it's like, oh, the mask gives you power. Mm -hmm. And then in, you know, in superhero American or Western superhero, it's like they have powers. powers. Yeah. And so it's just like by putting that together just like made it uh, make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like always that fusion that is exciting to work with. Yeah, that's, it's sort of like a blending of languages. It was inter it's always interesting blending talking about like Tony talking about music because music is like a language, right. but so is genres. Mm -hmm. And so like Richard Libre is, has a language to it. I would love to know, um, I, I know we don't have the costume designer here. Oh. Did you have to go mm -hmm. through multiple versions of the suit yeah. before you they chose the right one? Yeah. yeah, I think definitely the suit was a very big part of the show, obviously, because mm -hmm. yeah. that's like, you know, what the character is going to be. Um, I mean, they had so many di different versions mm -hmm. of the suit, but I definitely think that they picked the right ones. <laughs> I mean, they, the suits that we ended up with are so amazing, super yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, there was definitely a lot of different versions, lots of different fittings, lots of different. They were very good with making sure that they got the right version of what they wanted and got everything. And it was, it was, watching that process was crazy because the way they, you know, everything is measured. I mean, even when you do a luchador mask, you know, in, in Mexico, I mean, every aspect right. of your yeah. head is measured to perfection, but this was your entire body. Yeah. I mean, they're measuring finger to finger, leg to leg. Apparently, my re leg is longer That's than like my totally leg. That's too. Yeah. 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 Oh. What am I I don't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> Most people, by the way, if you're yeah. wondering, yeah, One of your legs is longer. Yeah. Um, and I was like, wait, what? No, no wonder I walk like this. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that, that process of it was, was really amazing to see and, and the, you know, the artistry and the creative process of it. It was, it was awesome. Well, I can't speak to the comfort, but you guys look like you're comfortable in that. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, we something are. else is that the masks are actually authentic luchador masks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the costume designer wanted it to be very authentic, and actually there's a guy in downtown Los Angeles mm -hmm. who makes 
luchador mask for luchadors, and uh, you pay him five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm not supposed to say that. I don't know. <laughs> and then he'll make the mask. <laughs> and then he, you know. And so those are like that because they're very hard to make. Yeah. Like you have to be able to see them. You have to be able to move them. You have to act. Breathe. Yeah. Like, yeah, breathe. You be able to breathe. Yeah. yeah. And we really wanted to have you know I mean it be very true to the lucha. Um, tradition, so we looked at like what is contemporary, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, in the lucha costumes, but also what is the iconography of like the real roots, like in Mexico. Yes. So like her um, kind of feathered uh, multicolor thing on on her waist is like you know inspired by like Aztec sculptures mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and even the knee pads, um, you know, on Black Scorpion and stuff like that. So little details we were looking yeah. at, like what can we do to say. You know, to give an homage, you know what I mean, to the previous Right, but culture. I think those little details are what brings such a beautiful authenticity to the storytelling, which is one of the main reasons I'm so excited about this show. Oh. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. For sharing yeah. some funny tidbits. Yeah. <laughs> we have to wrap things up here. Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion is premiering on June 3rd on Disney Channel, and the first 10 episodes will be out on Disney Plus on June 8th. Don't forget to check them out. Thank you all for being here, and thank you all for watching watching right here on LATV.